And I thought I needed more coffee. Okay, so the meeting is recording. Uh, welcome everyone to the, let's see, July 24th uh, MicroProfile live hangout meeting. Uh, the a link to the meeting minutes is in the notes. As is normal, it is everyone's responsibility to jointly take meeting notes. Uh, so please help me out with that since I talk too much um, and someone needs to fuck to keep up. Uh, okay, so um, now I need to share the screen so I can see what the heck the notes say. Do -do -do. You didn't press recording yet? Intentionally. Yeah, did. Uh, okay, so. It says recording here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, cool. For whatever reason, yeah, I see it up in the left hand corner now. Um, it sticks it in a different place than most other, uh, most other ones do. Let's see if I can find. Tell you what, let me do it this way because this makes it easier. Sorry, everyone. Doo -doo -doo. Let me try this again. Share. Oh, here it is. Too many windows. All right, does everyone see my Chrome browser? Yes, sir. N nothing incriminating. It's not the wrong window. Okay. So, uh, the agenda, normally we go through a roadmap status. Um, right now we are at MicroProfile 1.4 and uh, 2.0. And one of the things that we are doing is beginning to target uh, a 2.1 release. We haven't exactly put down a date yet, um, but if we go by um, kind of our, our quarterly cadence, want to have something by, I, I think by code one, if, if we can. Um, doesn't have to be new functionality, um, although it can be. It could also include uh, incremental updates of existing specs. 2.2 uh, .2 would be something more near the end of the year. Um, so I'm going to put this down, code one slash reactive. Uh, what was the conference called? Uh, Marcus? What, React reactive Summit? So because they're conference. all the same weekend. Eclipse yeah, it's, Con. it's exactly overlapping. It's it's a shame, honestly. Yeah, Europe. Okay, um, release. I think it'd be be good to have a release uh, by that time frame. Two two dot two. Uh, nice to have and end of year release. Okay. All right. Um, here's here's an interesting question. Are any specs looking to update along the 1.5 train, right? And 1.5 implies Java EE 7. Any? Yeah, we could update uh, config. Um, I'm currently in the process of pulling over the changes we did together um, for the dynamic stuff in the configuration system. And I want to kind of pull this back to micro profile and Emily will kind of pull the changes done in micro profile over to config as so we make them in sync. And this is perfectly fine with Java E7. So I, I, I'm a kind, I think is that we need to um, agree on the release time. So <clears throat> I would be fine to put on top of the 2.1, like uh, the release stream. And it depends on whether we want to do like uh, put more more things into the one dot five or we. Uh, I think is the uh, when we originally did this kind of release um, to release the uh, tracks one in the two dot x one in the one dot x. Like uh, I think is we mentioned that we kind of focus on the two dot x. Uh, and uh, I think is uh, if we do the three Q release, I think it make more sense like uh, to add, add uh, like uh, all these are updates on the two dot X. But yeah, would like to know what uh, other people think. So the question is, because we can, just because we can, should we? Right? Um, if there aren't any dependencies on the newer specs. Right, should we continue the 1.x train? Um, yeah. Just keep in mind that also implies that vendors will also, you know, there should be implementations of this. So if, if we decide to, to um, extend the, the 1.5 or the, or the 1.x train, then will there be implementations and will 
um, you know, folks update their app servers or whatever, their, their implementations to support the, the latest 1.x train. But then we go back to adaptability. We have no idea. We are not tracing how uh, the users um, are updating or not. So this is blind. And I will be careful to say, and John, you're correct, because we can, should we? What is the value? Since we, don't, since we are blind, I will be cautious on continuing to adjust small things, um, especially when we have, um, we just launched the two versions. We have Java 1. What is the timeline for this? I think we should do two things. One is, I think we should do the two things here. One is like, uh, yeah, we will, as Mark said, we will have a config update. We will have a micro profile config 1.4 release. And also we have, uh, uh, and then also we plan uh, for tolerance the one or two release, and then and then the other discussion is uh, like uh, we should focus on are we going to do one or five on two or one, or we just do two or one. That will be like if we only do two or one, we are fine to put uh, the update into two or one. We if could we, also yeah. We, we could also work with the compatibility metrics because the. Java as a microprofile config 1.5 will perfectly run on both microprofile 2.0 and 1.0 platforms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, it's a, there's a, it's a, it's a all fine. So basically, it's a, there's a, there's a kind of one definite answer is we plan to do a microprofile config update. Uh, like a one, like a, to be discussed is are we going to do the, just a focus on 2.1? And uh, just, just like uh, only do the back fixes in window X, or we are continue to progress uh, everything on under window X and two dot X. I think it, we can discuss that further. Yeah. So uh, one thing I would point out is you know we're this summer two years old now, and if we have any users at all. They're going to be on micro profile one. And so if we stop updating it, well, there aren't any users we don't need. We kill them off, kind of. So yeah. well, there's there's two ways to parse that. There's patches and bug fixes, right, to the specs. Um, then there's incremental new functionality. Right, so your point is, is valid, although I, I do wonder how quickly they're going to be moving over to the Java EE8 specs. Right, I'm just, I think yeah. that, you know, like that, that, that decision between moving to EE7 to EE8 is usually one of those decisions you make at the beginning of a pro, you, it's a decision that you make at the beginning of a project and you don't change it in the middle, usually. Mm -hmm. um, so once people are start going down a path, they, they write it out for that project and they may change their mind the second project, but projects tend to last like a year to in a year and a half. And so, uh, you know, I, I think we should, for things that are like config, where it can work fine in either, well, we should just take advantage and push it out in either. We, we as vendors don't need to maintain two config code bases, we just need to maintain one and we'll release it in two different packages. That's, that's okay. If we, if we had to actually make two different config uh, code bases, that, that would probably be going on, on the expensive side. And I don't know that there's any benefit of that, right? There's no, there's no plan to make a two different code bases. I was using it as an example. Oh. Right, right now. Yeah. So if we at some point in time figure that we need some Java E8 feature for config, of course, then we have to discuss this. But until then, it makes perfect sense to just have one kind of library which uh, works fine in both MicroProfile 2.0 and 1.0 platforms. Right. So I'm gonna. I apologize, just because this is this can take a lot of the call, and this is an hour call. What I've done is I I put this in the parking lot. Um, just in, in case we have time at the end, we can come back to this topic. Um, and I, 
I can also create a, a Google group thread on this that we can all kind of pipe in there. Is, is this okay Plus to everyone? One, Plus one. It's excellent. excellent. I was going to say, stop. Yeah, okay. Forward, write down the notes we've talked about so far and then move forward. And okay, I'm going to ask someone else to, 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 to speak down to, the, uh, to write the notes. It seems like there seemed to be a, a, a little bit of building consensus around doing them both as long as there's their feature equivalent. So, um, so let's get back to 2.1. I'm going to see if I can go back to uh, where we went um, at in the past. So we, so we looked at a, a potentially uh, a config for 1.4 uh, uh, metrics 2.0. What's the status for, for metrics uh, as it relates to either a 2.1 or 2.2 release? I mean, we want to get into 2.1. Um, as of today, I can't really guarantee it. On the other hand, um, we have a lot of things in flight, uh, which we may solve relatively quickly. And if we have that, then uh, we can have a 2.1 for okay. that date. All right, I'll let someone fix that. Uh, okay, let's go back to some other ones that we had a, a status on. I apologize if this isn't refreshing on your browsers quickly enough. I'm going back down to uh, the June 26 notes, taking a look. Um, yeah. Fault tolerance 1.2. Yeah, we still like how we trying to support uh, this um, uh, asynchronous with the completion stages stage. Yeah, is uh, the the thing the issue we discussed uh, the status we discussed in the the previous um, out is still valid. Okay. Um, I'm I'm going to skip the reactive stuff for now. I saw that down there. Um, so James, we'll we'll definitely get to that. Um, I want to move along pretty quickly here. Um, long running actions. Anyone on in that discussion on the call? I think many of those calls have been cancelled. So line running, yeah, I wasn't on the mandate call. Uh, so I think there's a few issues to be sorted out okay. and then more starting to happen. So I'm, uh, I'm afraid that that's going to be a long running uh, at hate itself. <laughs> I, I'm instantly laughing that we had a couple meetings over there, but they didn't last very long. <laughs> yeah, normally Ken might pipe in, but Ken's on PTO. So, 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 yeah, Ken's not gonna. Uh, it is I, I, was making, I was making a topic joke that the wrong line. Oh, oh, okay. No, I got you. Further to my joke. Uh, but yeah, you are so dry. More dry. More like it's just oh, your joke. All right, Emily got it. So yeah, I'm gonna. Okay, I go through it. I, I, so so uh, I'm going to keep trying to move on here. Um, any other updates planned for 2.1? Besides, uh, besides uh, uh, reactive stuff? Because I want to give James kind of the floor for a little bit. OK. Actually, the uh, good Antoine is here. I think Antoine is a Heiko, uh, no Heiko, Clement did the kind of change in the uh, health tech. Can we do a one-to-one -on -one release on the health check? Uh, regarding health check, we are still discussing about introducing a liveness, readiness, yes. and wetness. And uh, yeah, and the other so, issue is about uh, the... It's okay, uh, it's okay on the spec, we have to uh, add it to the spec. And uh, I have to discuss with um, uh, Clement because he had some input on that to make sure that we'll be able to introduce it for the next release. Yeah, uh, yeah this, this, oh, sorry, <laughs> you, you go for it. Have you finished? Yeah, finished. Okay, so there's a uh, one pull request that has been merged previously. So that's yeah. change the message body, in the, like a response body in the uh, slash house endpoint. Uh, I so I, I'm really like uh, waiting to to have the release ready so that I can consume that change. So I think we should have a have a health check one or one. So I quite uh, I quite like what the, uh, to separate the um, meaning of the lameness and readiness so that we can take a full advantage of Kubernetes. 
Okay, to be honest, I think it will be possible, but um, mm. I, I cannot say for sure right now, but uh, okay. in, uh, in coming in next week or something like that. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna cut that one short there. Um, thanks everyone. Uh, sorry, just trying to manage the clock um, again. Um, uh, anything um, else, any, any other yes. spec? In the last meeting about the architecture, we had discussion about integrating ChuxRS with MicroProfile. And uh, we now kind of know the rules. And that is that kind of ChuxRS endpoints need to be, or should be CDI beans. And this is the, the only possible way we are fully portable. And this needs to be reflected in the various TCKs, if I uh, got this correctly. Emily, you have been part. Uh, I, so, I think that's a few. That's the one that, sorry. That's one of the discussion point. I don't, when I left, I don't think we made any final decision. I think we should continue that discussion. I think, uh, yeah, didn't check the, 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 the minutes. Yeah, and the point is that this needs kind of, it's nothing in the APIs for the user, but it affects the TCKs. So yeah. there should be um, kind of small amendments to the TCKs, we fix the TCKs, and then we're gonna do the technical release might be kind of a hotfix release. I'm not quite sure if you want to have this on the radar for the releases because it's kind of only for the vendors and it does not change nothing for the users actually. Except clarifying how to write the portable micro profile application, which is kind of cool anyway. But so we, we've always had both CDI and JAXRS in micro no, no, the, the point is that the JAXRS defines the rule. So how do you pick up the application and arrest endpoints? Uh, and the path annotation alone is not enough because it doesn't, um, the discovery is not defined in JAXRS. JAXRS defines a few discovery points and the one is the main discovery point is Java SE. So you have to register the endpoints manually or programmatically, which is kind of out of scope. We won't do that. We don't want to promote that. The second one is in servlet via WebXML, registering the application or the resources. And the third one is to make them a managed bean and then they get auto discovered. The only managed bean we have in MicroProfile is CDI beans. So as simple as that, just add a meta and beans XML or uh, make them at application scope, request scope, session scope, or whatever, CDI scope. And then they will get out to discovered. Right, then there's a fourth one where you have an uh, application config that, that lists all the... It, in the application class, but you have to register the application class with WebXML. Yeah. Um, all right, so, so, so sorry again. Um, I, I think what we need to do here is, you know, do we need a, more well-defined top-level spec that covers these kind of items, right? That's um, that's something I think that we should consider. Yeah, it's not really like a spec per se. It is more like um, if yeah. you're going to be a project inside micro profile, here's how you write your TCK, here's how you do your... Well, it's also for the end users to how to write their applications because in Java Enterprise, this is covered in the umbrella spec most of the parts. But we don't have this because uh, Java Enterprise umbrella spec is not part of micro profile. Okay, so th this is something that you're imagining having an opinionated perspective on how you write a JAXRS endpoint in micro profile. So basically, let me like try to clarify this. So basically, the... that's, that's clear for me, but yeah. Uh, not quite uh, to that extent. Uh, we are trying to uh, like specify how to write a TCK. So basically, it's uh, in the Java E umbrella spec, it didn't say the JAXRS has to rely on CDI and uh, has to like a JAXRS endpoint must be CDI beans. Otherwise, uh, your JAXRS is not functioning. So in different application servers, they react differently. And like uh, open liberty is not like you have to use a CDI. So I have to use a CDI to make a JAXRS to function. So basically uh, in the previous discussion is like uh, in the micro profile spec umbrella, micro profile umbrella spec, we specify anything unclear in the Java E spec. So this, this is kind of in the Java Enterprise area, the okay. only portable solution right now is to make Guys. endpoints manage beans. Guys, I anyway. think... I'm, I'm, I'm going to pause. Um, yes. So, 
I'm going to ask for a volunteer to lead this discussion, and it sounds like it's a discussion that right, rightfully probably started in the architecture group. So is there someone from the architecture group that might want to kind of lead this via either in that form um, or as a Google group thread? Who wants to kind of take the AI to, to lead this? I think Alistair started uh, discussing <laughs> He's this. Not with, uh, here. He's not here right now, but uh, so he can't say no, <laughs> but he's right in the middle and he has kind of lots of input already. So he probably we're going to start this with him. Mark is correct. Let's add, his email. Let's add his email here and say you own this thread. But you know what? Avoid a private, like the, the video calls and let's just start a thread because this can be complex. More complex, you are making it by talking about it in a level that we try to please everyone. That's incorrect. I see it. We will not be able to please everyone. And documenting this kind of thing needs to be so short, so perfect. And the level that will not deter people from reading hundreds of pages. If we can have this super short to say, this is what you do, one, two sentences, and then just the basics. To most, enable. Of the, most of the discussions have been in GitHub uh, at that issue. But we have, a, we have the data all over the place. We have talked about this. All the documentation is a freaking mess. So we need to, do, we need to start cleaning up and bringing all of it together. And that is another you know, dragon to, to tackle. Okay, summary, there might be some umbrella spec for microprofile needed, which kind of glues together the, the missing links. Mm -hmm. yeah, we, have yes. umbrella, okay. we have an umbrella spec. So if it's a matter of updating it, then we should do that. But we have an umbrella spec. Yeah. yeah. And don't talk okay. about links. I do the test, the work links. So okay. Let, let me just do one more sentence to see. Actually, this is a topic in the, like, uh, in the architecture meeting. And in the previous architecture meeting, we haven't get to bottom of it. I think it's, uh, it's, uh, everything is in, tracked in there. However, all the discussion happened there, but the uh, end result, we bring to the micro profile umbrella stack. So I don't think it's a, uh, it makes sense. Like, uh, say, other day you got, to, you got to do this. Actually, this is all happening in the architecture discussion. Mm -hmm. I don't think, uh, yeah. So. OK, so I'm going to, uh, again, kind of pause this. It looks like we need a little bit more discussion on this. Is there anything else targeting 2.1? All right, so now I'm, I'm going to skip 2.2 .2 in the interest of time um, and go down to new spec overview um, where we have, let's say, 15 minutes, James, if you want to maybe cover those in, in 15 minutes or so. And then also, as a part of that, list where you think uh, uh, any kind of release that this might target, these might target. Can we do 12? I will put the minutes, like the timer. 12 minutes. Seriously. <clears throat> OK. Um, so um, I'm not sure where to start. Uh, we're, we're developing two specs as part of Reactive. The first one is uh, MicroProfile Reactive Streams Operators. Um, by itself, um, it actually doesn't really bring much in any any functionality to microprofile, but it's necessary for anything else that wants to use reactive streams. Um, and if, if you haven't, um, there, there's a document in microprofile reactive called approach.ascii.doc, um, which I'll put in the chat. This, that goes through the, the rationale as to, to why that spec um, exists. Um, uh, okay, I'll put it in. Somebody else can put it in the minutes while I'm chatting. Um, <clears throat> so the um, so so this is essentially uh, defining um, an, an equivalent to the JDK eight streams API, but for asynchronous streaming. So JDK eight streams is um, is doing things like um, uh, allowing you to do map, flat map, filter, that sort of stuff on top of a, um, a, um, a, a collection that's in memory or a, a collection that's available immediately. It could be an inf infinite collection. 
um, whereas reactive streams is for handling something that's say being streamed across a network where everything's not available immediately and and, and you need to worry about back, back pressure going back up along the, the chain. Uh, so um, that, that part of the spec is, um, uh, could definitely be ready for microprofile two one. It's it's um, in its current state. It's it's very close to um, to something that could be uh, uh, could to to release. Um, the only question is, um, does it make sense releasing it without something that's actually going to use it? Uh, so um, so that would bring us onto messaging. Just uh, with the operators, there are currently. Uh, two implementations, one that we've created in Lightband based on ACA streams and one that uh, Clement has created um, in um, small RAI and it's based on Rx Java and Vertex. Uh, so um, it's, it's TCK is, is pretty close to finished and quite comprehensive as well. Uh, so that brings us on to the messaging spec. Um, so the messaging spec is for handling messages from uh, topics or, or queues. Um, and it's, it's got more of a focus on events than anything like that than JMS has. So it, it's, it's where we're, to, although we're not excluding things that are for messaging, we are targeting things that are, are more interested in, in events. Um, and so, and, and the primary, um, uh, use case that we're talking about also is is Kafka, but it's certainly not tied to Kafka. Um, so, with the um, with the messaging spec, um, this is um, in, in a nutshell. You put uh, you put on a CDI bean and at incoming or at get outgoing or both annotations on on a method, and um, and that will um, there's a few different shapes of what that method can look like. It can return a um, one of these reactive streams operators um, uh, classes to be able to to declare how the stream should be handled, or it can or it can handle messages directly by invoking the method. Uh, and uh, it's up to the microprofile container to um, to wire that method essentially into um, handling. Um, uh, uh, messages from and to the the topics declared. Uh, so um, at the moment, um, that that spec is is in a fairly basic state, um, and there's been a lot of chatting over over the, the next features to do. But but um, uh, personally, right now I'm I'm waiting. Um, so Clement has started working on a small. Rye implementation, and I want to make sure that um, that happens concurrently with going on onto the next features, so that it's not just me writing my Lightbend implementation um, and and leaving everyone else kind of behind. Uh, so in in the coming um, in the coming weeks, uh, that should start to ramp up a bit. The TCK where is the main thing that I've been working on recently, which has been fairly involved, and and we've had to talk to a Killian um, people uh, to to kind of understand how to how to implement it um, properly from a, a Killian point of point of view, um, and uh, that's that's now the the TCK itself is now kind of in in full swing, so we should have um, a fairly good TCK uh, soon. Um, now, as for the timing for that, um, there's not a huge amount of work left to do on it. Um, however, in the coming weeks, there's a, a number of people with PTO, and then um, after that, I'm going on uh, a month or more of paternity leave. Uh, so I'm not sure if it'll be ready by um, uh, by microprofile 2.1 or not. Um, it certainly would be nice to get it by then, um, but we'll we'll have to. Um, we'll have to see. It depends on um, on yeah how how quickly we add. There's there's uh, I think three or four 
essential features that we have have put in scope for the 1.0 release. Um, if we can get them specified um, uh, by then, then it could be uh, it could be released. But um, if not, we might have to wait for a 2.2. .2. Um, that's the main thing that I wanted to say. Uh, uh, does anybody have any questions about it? Five minutes exactly. Impressive. Out of twelve. <laughs> so I have a I have a like a opinion regarding releasing stream operator. Uh, my vote, uh, I would think, is probably the not much value to release this without API use it because we are not sure whether it's correct or not. And then even if we release it, what's the point to release it if nobody use it? So I would like, uh, I would like vote to have this reactive stream operator together with the reactive messaging. Yeah, bond yep. together. Is there any other application which could pick up or any other spec which could pick up this stuff right now so does it make sense to kind of um, um, provide the infrastructure so others can play around with it or does it really make sense only with kind of another spec which uses this stuff already so we we could definitely um I mean, there's there's nothing stopping us from releasing operators itself, or perhaps you know an, an early release that that can be played with. It um, it doesn't yeah. um, require much container integration. It, it obviously yeah. requires an implementation of it. But but as far as pulling that as a third party library versus requiring the container to support it, um, it it doesn't uh, require much at all. Um, only if you start. At the moment, the um, the context side of thing, the, the propagating context, in, um, is is not specified at all in in operators in the operator spec. But it, it probably won't be. That's probably going to be up to the specs that use it that need to specify what context should be available to to um, the operator callbacks. Um, so um, it can definitely be be played around with today, even. Um, uh, as as far as whether actually actually specs um, want to to actually uh, use it, um, anything that's that wants to do streaming, it, it may make sense to to have a look at. So, um, JaxRS, for example, um, could support it um, uh, um, for for um, doing things like handling um, SSE or um, or just handling streaming um, the the request and response bodies. James, I have a question. So we're talking about a yep. sandbox for people for users to play with uh, that are interested in reactive, or are we talking about a fork? What are the pros and cons of um, you know just no, it's getting? A, yeah, it's rather this. just releasing a motor without a car, so end users will not be able to do anything with it. It is not the finished car. But it's an important motor for this thing. Is this correct? If I did I understand this correct? Uh, yeah, that's probably a good way to describe it. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, we could we could definitely uh, maybe we should look at releasing a if if we don't make it in the two dot one release um, with operators, maybe we should look at releasing uh, zero dot nine. Um, so without actually actually having a spec that, that uses it, we should delay the 1.0 until we have we that. Have. But if we have a 0 0.9, then um, people can start pulling it in and, and trying it out with other specs. May I suggest, um, may I recommend that we, you start a thread and add Clement to it and put something in motion that will create some action to see what actually we can do. When we use the if, nothing gets accomplished. And because of the summer yeah. MPTO, you know, if we focus on the lines, but not in the why and in the value, we fail completely. So this is just, isn't it? Are you okay to start a thread at Clem and say, hey, we talked about this. These are the minutes. What can we do? And just put something in motion that you and my band are com comfortable. Because if, if, we, if we can drop it, this could take forever to, to talk about the minutia as to why. Better to just put it to the, to the community to get, gather some feedback. 
So let me let me try to ask you uh, for the pushing this operator release. Who is asking for it? Which spec? Which use case? So I'm I I I think we run into the risk. We do something extra. Actually, no, nobody use it. And then what's the point to to rush into like uh, to do this thing? Emily, this is why we will start a, a thread to see. Oh, some yeah. I thought. Sorry, I missed it. I thought uh, that have a thread that is super Okay. Okay. Yeah, and and it's done. Twelve twelve minutes. Thanks. Okay, right on the dot. Um, so just quick, I didn't go. Go ahead, David. Yeah, I was gonna say. Uh, can I share a screen for just a little bit? Yeah, no problem. Let me pause share. Does that work for you? Actually, no. I should stop share. I think I clicked it too soon. There you go. Awesome. Uh, where is that? So, uh, have you have you checked out? So there was a bunch of work in progress we had in in on the JMS side of the fence to make it all annotation based, and it all got canned before. Well, it all got canned when Oracle decided to to kill EE. Uh, it was one of the last things to get canned, but it got canned. Uh, but anyway, the, the attempt was to effectively to bury the JMS API under annotations, and then you just could to put as many annotations as you want on top of uh, on top of a plain old bean and be able to consume messages and get them coerced into the data type you wanted in a very JAXRS fashion. So if you had like a, a, a JMS message that was in application JSON, you could get marshaled into a data type like you can in, in JAXRS. So effectively, yeah. basically taking the JAXRS perspective, what JAXRS did for serverless, which serverless is like a, a very old clunky API where we have like one big fat message object. Uh, and then JAXRS came along and said, hey, you can use annotations to describe what you want out of the message and what messages you want, what things you want to listen to and do the exact same thing on the JMS side of the fence. Yeah, um, it, so the messaging spec does is, is, does do that. Um, the, the scope of it is is very, very light. We want that in, in 1.0. Um, so so um, a lot of the features of, um, of what you'd be able to do in an MDB are not available. Um, though there are some additional things like it, it's not just about um, message handling with this approach. It's also about emitting, producing me messages with this approach. Uh, so you can do transformations that go from one topic and then get put on another and things like that. Right. Yeah. And so I don't think that those things are impossible to do in JMS. And I think that, so what I'm yep. saying is, it, can we figure out how to merge these together so we don't have two nearly identical things, one that's slightly got a JMS flavor tasting to it, and one that's just the same stuff, um, but without the JMS taste. Um, is it, I wonder if there's some way we can merge them in some way, because uh, I definitely want to see this work released, because it, you know, it was like a couple years of work. Um, yeah. And it, so, you know, it, and, and it's not finished in the sense of, it's not been actually, uh, in, you know, issued as final. We, I would say we got probably 70% of the way there, if not 80. But since it got canned, we could pick it up and read cha and change it. However, yeah, so what, what I think could be done here is, is to... Um, it is the, the the integration could be provided in in such a way that if if you want to use JMS as the underlying um, technology, you can you can do that and you can supply all these annotations. Um, but I think that might be um, too much for one dot spec. So um, I, I'd say. Um, you, you would have your your incoming and, and outgoing 
annotations. So incoming would be equivalent to a topic listener, essentially. Mm -hmm. And then um, you'd be able to specify the provider for the this incoming, for example, is, is JMS. Um, and then you can add your message selector. Um, uh, the auto acknowledge will probably be handled um, by the spec, um, but but then yeah, listener property and specifying the connection factory, the the to the topic itself will be passed through the messaging API. Um, I definitely think that they can be con consolidated and and considered the same thing. Um, Although message driven, the, the message driven bean, so in, in this spec, there's no such thing as a message driven bean, it's just CDI beans and um, it hooks into the context and, and life cycle of the bean that it's, of the CDI bean that it's declared on. Yeah, okay, I, sorry, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna call. Um, yep. yep, I just wanted to make sure that this was in the discussion so that we yep. didn't move forward as if this didn't already exist. It does already exist. So I think we need to figure out how to sort it out in some way. That doesn't have to happen yep. on the call, but I just want to make sure that that's in the conversation. Yeah, um, it, it sounds like a good place to have this is in the the messaging group, right? Um, you, you could start something in the in the Google I'll group. To the agenda yeah. for, um, for the next Hangout. Yeah, I like the I, I like the overall idea though. Um, all right, so uh, let me see here if I can go back to sharing the meeting notes, or we could all stare at James full screen. That's kind of our options. Option. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do, 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 do. I'm trying. I'm trying. Share screen. I've got like. About 20 windows open here we go i think it was a, uh, the next item likely was about a committer what do we how do we deal with no I, I i apologize i was gonna um actually go to the documentation approach um okay yeah uh, so so marcus joined he had an ai i think from from the last call to go over um to discuss documentation approaches so marcus do you want to um uh go ahead and take the floor yeah, absolutely. I'll make it super short. Um, basically, I thought about something that Lightband is using, if we can make it reusable in, in certain ways for um, our purposes. Talking to James and ex exchanging like a couple of ideas um, that's literally not doable. Um, looking at alternatives, WordPress, Orchid, even Antara, um, we ended up, or I ended up, uh, suggesting JBake as as a backend for documentation. Um, we can trigger all changes via the ICD, um, check in code changes um, normally via GitHub. So um, WordPress is uh, probably not the right way of of doing that. So that is technically very short. My recommendation in proceeding. You mentioned Antora. The, the, the project created by um, Dan, Alex, right. and you said that was not a good option? It's Node.js based. So then that, that limits our resources to what again? JBake. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's also ASCII Doctor. I think we have a couple of good experiences around JBake. It's technically a static site generator. Um, all, the, all the specs are already using ASCII Doctor to generate specs, aren't they? Yeah. Yes. So I think ASCII Doctor is, is completely clear because it's this is the, the most uniform thing we have right now. So what we have right now is basically, uh, well, what's currently published is 100% generated from ASCII Doctor. Um, then there is an effort, you know, where, where Ryan basically put a WordPress together for the front page of the website, but that would not extend to the various projects. The projects would still have to write something that was generated. That code is like this mashup stuff that we wrote that's in groovy and no one can understand it. So it probably has to go. Replacing it with something that would be Node.js based, I agree with Marcus, it would be like repeating the same mistake. 
Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. So, Even if it's magically doing fancy shit. Yeah, exactly. Think, no one can maintain it. It's worthless, right? So Right. So, so JPEG looks like the only reasonable alternative compared to just GitHub pages. JPEG works really good. We have this in a few projects. The question is really more who's going to put the time into it. Good question. I, I'm I'm I missed the last meeting where this was initially brought up, so it's unclear to me the problem that is trying to be addressed. Um, the problem is that we have too many too, documentation has spread out all over the place, and we need to put it together into a single spec. You mean into a single document, or is it is it because it's in a bunch of different repos or uh, operational stuff like just creating that kind of microprofile.io website is a nightmare, oh. and backed by Ruby code that nobody can maintain anymore. Gro so groovy, we, yeah. groovy, whatever. It's yeah, yeah. isn't it all the same. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, um, long story short, um, we definitely need to need to do some maintenance um, if we want to grow and extend that further. So this is really about the website. It's not about the spec documentation. Correct. Oh, okay. Actually, say this is about dot com um, mp dot com because it does get confused um, when we say documentation approach. But it's not com. It's not. It's not a com. It's IO. So IO. Right. Get with, get with the modern times. Yes, IO. www. Dot. Okay. Will, you forgot will, HTTP colon slash slash. Okay, I will. Like to, no S at all. Just HTTP. So and you so don't Mark, do the www anymore. Yeah, Marcus, write down like so your, you. what you told us, and then let's move. Andro, Andro already gave the, the you know, this. Um, we can. That has been handled that could check your call. And then can we table governance question? We should have that in a different call or the next call or something because that is a too big of a topic. And we have a deadline. Many of you got, and this is about marketing and the case study. Lars is on vacation this week still, but I sent access to a few of you who asked about it last call. And all of you that wanted to see the outline now have access to comment on it. The deadline is the 27th. We have extended the final deadline, the, the second week of October, the 9th or 8th of October, to match it tentative to code one and EclipseCon Eclipse Con Germany and all other conferences. But um, the outline that you have to review, should you want to participate, is this week on the 27th. Questions about that? No questions? Okay, read the right. minutes. Follow up the questions via the minutes. Uh, if, if anyone here wants access and do not have it, let us know. Um, Marcus. You had a question about, Marcus has something super interesting. Um, there was a thought about when the outline is actually written in a document, who gets to review it? And Marcus, can you own your feedback on that one? So yeah, we, um, we did a little, little math in the marketing call. It sounds weird, but we did. So um, the idea was that we have 1,000 something members in general. Um, and uh, we actually need to find a way to funnel their feedback for that document whenever we share it back into one person who's the creator slash owner slash editor. And um, instead of um, drowning Lars in all those comments, my idea was to name a couple of owners. Um, and I went with the number of five um, technical topic owners or business owners or whatever we want to name them, but just five people that are eligible to actually share comments with Lars and um, receive feedback from the broader community to just make sure that Lars is not ending up with uh, more than 10,000 comments on that document after five days of review phase. Yes, and the, the, it is not 10 days to receive community feedback. We extended that because five days is not enough. 
But I disagree. I agree with the board that, that we need a focus. I explained during the marketing committee that when the config JSR was written, it became with two people and then it included a few others and it was done beautifully, right? Because of the openness um, in the collaboration. I do agree that we need to limit, we, we will open the document for view and the community will get to see it. But the five is not sufficient. I, we do, personally, I do not wanna see only vendors added to the yes, because I am whatever. No, no, we need to include them. I said Mark Struber, we, you know, um, likely Adam being if he has the time and I won't speak for him. But what I do not wanna see is the five people. I said, let's do, if we say five, let's do 10. More brains are better. And I do not believe the 1,445 will have comments. Not everyone has the time and not everyone, everyone cares. They just wanna see good things. So we need to be much more careful of adding limits to how we do this. I am into more brains, not less. I think we can do better. Okay, I think, uh, I think uh, is, uh, to be honest, I think it's uh, both the markers and media at some point. However, I think uh, to start with these five people, I think uh, I agree with Marcus. Basically, get rid of all the obvious mistakes, and then we can open up to the wider audience and pick on something like a more complicated. It's more okay. like, like a grammar check or, or obvious typo, and etc. And then we can just uh, make it to be uh, like a readable state. I'm em not Emily, that's yeah. sorry to jump in. That's not even part of it. So we will have like a complete proofread and layout and design phase after that. Just speaking technical comments or relevant technical additions to the document. So it's more than likely that more than two, more than 1,000 people with each more than one or two or three comments will create a mess in this document, no, no matter what. I disagree. And the thing is that not everyone, if we send this document, I do not know how many of you got to even write one comment, though I sent access last week. What I, 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 will, I will review this week. <laughs> I would be very surprised if we get very much participation. Yeah, and I think we will get one once we open it and we do say, you know, initial, like these are the people, um, you know, we need to say these are the people in charge of gathering the data, but the document is here for view because we work in the open. And, then, you know, I think not many people, I, I swear not many people will do so because it takes time and there is responsibility and you have to say how much, how much do I need to do? Emilia, again, I'm not fighting transparency. I'm just trying to save the, the anticipated release date, which was um, Oracle Code 1 as yeah. like the same time frame. So um, if I'm, I'm even fine with opening it, the only thing, that I, the only thing that I suggest is uh, being very clear and crisp about it that the end date is probably not achievable if that happens, right? So that's what I was trying to work around. Yeah, and I agree. The document cannot be opened to everyone, to the thousand for comments. View only, and I do believe in assigned people, however, five is too poor, when in this call we have 12. And I do believe that the community, the ones that want to add value, will volunteer themselves. So I recommend, and this is my recommendation, to request, to send a thread and say, who will want to participate on this? And instead of us choosing ourselves, because that is easy, we can ask. And I, I trust that maybe three people will say, I will want to participate. We are better doing the homework before than getting a splash later. And that will be my philosophy. Do not limit it without asking. I'm just saying, let's create a thread and ask who wants to volunteer to gather, to work on this document that will, is, is being led by Lars. Who is, Lars is getting paid zero money. He's actually doing this because he loves microprofile and its community and its value. So that will make all of it the better. It's just I don't believe in us choosing the people. That will be my point. Limiting it. Everyone else comment on this because it's only one perspective. Um, I would just, like I said, I'm just really surprised if we got much feedback at all. My experience in in, in open source communities, if you want to do something simple like paint a bike shed, you'll get a ton of opinions on colors. The second you stick out something that's any meat in it, everyone goes away. 
and they don't want to do real work. I mean, that's a generalization, but I, I typically don't find a lot of participation. They, they want to do lots of work, but the problem is that they are afraid of doing the wrong in publicity and so on. Say so they kind of are afraid of making a fool of themselves, which I'm not, so I'm an open source guy. Hey, I started the meeting that way. I made a fool of myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know, um, oh. so we don't I, have I was, John, I was about to say you worked for Oracle before. So <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to suggest that we start out with an open, more open as Amelius says, and then um, we can constrain it if things actually do get out of control. But, but I do believe that view only and I do believe, I do believe in Marcus' idea of saying owners, a few owners, because we will drop it on the floor. Clearly, like there, here we have many people that can, that are good writers and can and know about all the projects. There are eight or nine, eight projects. So we need to represent all of them. And this is a vendor neutral. It's technical. We want to increase adaptability of microprofile. That is the main goal. So, and this is going to be free. Once it's available, it's going to be downloadable. And we go to conferences, we get to print it out should we want to. So, uh, in which form is this currently available? This is just uh, Google Docs, isn't it? So, what so about what? kind of creating a version, Better. publishing it as PDF on some Git repo, and then creating Git issue tracker for them? Because everyone can create Git issue tracker then. It does not directly go back to the original documentation, but you have good discussions. People can give feedback, can review this stuff. We're not there yet. That is, and I don't believe that this document, uh, that is what, uh, it, that I will go plus one with Marcus. We can add this document to PR and say this is code. No, it's technical. The parts that are code, I think need to be handled differently. Maybe that section needs to be uh, edited in PR, but the written form is an award via comments or comment and suggestion. So we do need owners on this, but what I'm saying is, can we, are we comfortable to start a thread and say, who wants to, and it can be ping in the profile. And I guarantee it, just like David said, that maybe not even, it's not that I don't say that our community is amazing, it's that it takes work, it's summer, the timelines are a little bit aggressive. So, and Mark, you're correct. Many will not want to work in the open. So, it goes by preference. So can, can, we, can we shove a, so I don't think PDF or anything like that is a scalable. I mean, don't solicit feedback and then we have a whole bunch of work on actually accepting the feedback. I think probably we want to push it, something out there where the feedback can, we can handle. Make it ask it talk, push it to GitHub. Well, what I was, that's. All right, I, I, I apologize, we're actually three minutes after the top of the hour. Um, yeah. Let's give like two more minutes to wrap it up. Yeah, if we just push it out there in the Google Doc and make it so that people can comment but can't edit anything, we'll see what kind of flood we get. I suspect it won't be any, if very little. If it does become a problem, then we discuss what to do about it. Well, we have, we have a month to discover how to do it because the outline is pretty much done and it's very simple and you guys, have, uh, many of you have view. But we have a month to see, to see, are we using WordDoc? And I think we should keep it super simple to WordDoc and, and, and suggestion for those that will be delegated. Right, but I mean, can we, can, just, can we grab a copy of it and shove it up to Google Docs and put it out to the public to comment on with it being read-only, but they can comment, and then we'll see what we get. If we don't get any, any problems or if we don't get any feedback, then we, we don't really have a problem to solve. Yeah, but I love to say the outline is already completed in the level that it's not really a, 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 a Marcus Richard, you read it. It's not really a written document, it's just a form, a skeleton. So I, I don't think it matters. Whatever text we have can be in a Google Doc. David, that's do me, do me a favor and look over it before you make that request again. I okay. think, uh, yeah, I already had to open it up. It is already Google Doc. I see some comments already. I just read a few paragraphs. John had like 150, for example. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I was just getting yeah. warmed up. <laughs> that Guys, is my fear. You, you see what I mean? We can't open it for all to, 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 to comment. It's impossible. And the deadline is the 27th for Lars to start writing about it next week. 
So, we... and, and there's, there's another political issue here, um, which is that Lars is on vacation. So he actually has no, like, this is his brainchild. And he offered, like Amelia pointed out in the marketing call, to do this voluntarily, right? So whatever we do with this document without him being present is definitely going to overwhelm him. So I, I strongly suggest to take the least intrusive road, route on that. We will not do anything with the document until Lars gets back and he says what he's comfortable with. I do believe in transparency, however, he's off. And he just told me yes, uh, last week that he cannot, he doesn't have um, Wi-Fi except from his phone. Yeah. So even the new, uh, uh, the new timelines that we kind of chose yesterday are not going to be pushed to him or the community. We need to work on this. We have time. So nothing okay. will be done until he's back. So, so summary, I, I apologize, um, but so we are, we should continue to edit the doc. Yes. Um, okay. So, so that's the, that's the important thing. Yeah. The reason why I have like 150 comments is because they're, I put on suggestion mode. It wasn't my doc. I didn't realize Lars was gone. So, um, so I'll, like I'll I, yeah, I, I can go off and resolve all those. It'll be a much cleaner document uh, for everyone to look at. So, um, so I guess everyone go ahead and, and uh, edit the doc. Um, we'll just have to do it collaboratively via comments as opposed to suggestion mode. All right. So I'm going to, I'm going to end the call here. Um, yeah. and, uh, just, uh, thank you everyone for joining a uh, good meeting. The next meeting is I think is August 7th. I'm pulling up the calendar here. Um, same bat time, same bat channel. And, uh, thanks again, everyone for joining. Bye everyone. Yep. Ciao. Bye. 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 Bye.